everyone. Welcome to Networked India. It's a joint initiative by Ericsson and CNN IBM. Two months ago, we set out to discover how technology and connectivity are bringing us closer and improving lives. In our journey, we came across inspiring stories of innovation and social change. Innovators from across the country participated in this campaign. And tonight, as we culminate this campaign, we will meet some of the best and the brightest minds, the best homegrown innovators who are going to try to woo you with their game-changing ideas. And to talk more about how the network society is fast becoming a reality, may we have on stage Mr. Yeron Dorasti, Vice President and Head of Operations, Ericsson India. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor and a privilege to extend a hearty welcome to all of you here on behalf of Ericsson. Tonight is all about and the Networked India to provide a platform to identify, to encourage, to promote, to share innovative ideas that use cloud, broadband and mobility to the benefit of society in India at large. And if there is one takeaway, I think, uh, for tonight, it's, it's this one. It's all about turning big ideas into real big changes. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a very pleasant, informative uh, evening. Thank you very much. It's time to welcome a very, very special guest, a man who has been at the forefront of the giant strides that India has been making in space research and exploration. In his 33-year-long career at the Indian Space Research Organization, he has successfully managed several satellite missions and has won many awards and honors for his pioneering work. But his most crucial and significant contribution comes in India's much celebrated Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan missions. Please welcome Director of ISRO Satellite Center, Dr. Mailaswamy Anadurai. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really happy to be part of uh, this particular evening. Today, definitely, India needs not big ideas. Big ideas also required, even small ideas also grown up, but we'd make big changes. Nearly 59 missions have gone to the moon, Mars, and uh, Ma Mangalyan is only 59th mission. That means, in other words, 59th attempt to India, 59th time you are going, Nominally, it can be termed as a also end case. But Walt made also end case to a small innovation. He really looked at the history of how 49 missions have gone. Not many have succeeded. Not even a single country succeeded in its first attempt. In this background, Mangalyan taking one fourth of the normal schedule, one tenth of the budget of the similar missions, in its maiden attempt, made successfully Mars going around the Mars, it's happened there. <laughs> having done that, <laughs> having done that, it got, it has been awarded a Space Pioneers Award for its innovation. What is that innovation? You look back, and that, and this today's event of Network India, possibly there is a connection. What does that mean? As I told, very many failures were there. There is a saying, failure is a stepping stone for success. A small correction Mangalyan has made doesn't mean you have to fail yourself to make it success. Possibly getting the understanding what is the failures elsewhere, also possibly you can convert into a success. I think that's what happened Mangalyan is concerned. And the global network enabled us to understand what is the reason behind the failures of 16 failures happened originally. And each one of the failures have been gone through. The reasons have been understood. Causes have been plucked. And in our mission, all these 16 causes have been plucked, making the mission success in the first attempt. So coming back to this today's event, it basically trying to tell thanks to the global network, which enabled us to understand what happened for the ages, and such that we need not repeat the same issues so that 
probably today's my talk is to get the thanks to the community which enabled us to connect to the failures of elsewhere to understand ourselves how we can correct it that's what we can do similarly look at chandrayaan very many missions have gone to the moon nearly 67 missions gone to the moon but not even a single mission unambiguously answered what are on the moon chandrayaan even though it is a maiden attempt to media unambiguously told to the world discovery of water and molecules on the surface of the moon it has been told because a slightly different innovative way india looked the moon that means the innovative minds are there need not be for the going to the moon need not be going for the mars it's possibly can be done so called networking india also equally possible yes the communication satellites of india today which is governing for the space communication for the national needs connecting that into the way in which you are talking about today putting together it's very much feasible not very much far away very much feasible in the years to come so called digital india in the true form it's possible to have it is our duty to make sure that by 2020 properly connected network india connectivity to earth can concern and enabling india to march forward and seeing the real india what kalam looking for thank you very much we started the networked india campaign because we believed in the indian innovation story we wanted to recognize and reward the best innovators in the domain of communications networking and mobility and the entries we received further strengthened our belief tonight we present the top 5 innovations that exemplify how networked india can indeed be turned into reality the top 2 innovations stand to win 5 lakh rupees each let's take a look so here are the final 5 of the networked india campaign arterial pulse analyzer a cardiovascular screening device wifi trash bin incentivizing waste disposal helping faceless and app to fight child trafficking immunize india world's largest vaccination reminder service and constar park a parking on demand app These are the final five. We'll talk about them in detail, ladies and gentlemen. It's now over to the grand jury to pick the best. And in the grand jury, we have among us Mr. Kiran Karnik, former president, NASCOM. <laughs> Mr. Harkesh Mittal, head of National Science and Technology Entrepreneurship Development Board, Department of Science and Technology. <laughs> Mr. Nishant Rao, country manager, LinkedIn. Mr. Alok Goyal, Managing Director, CEF Partners, and Mr. Sonam Bangtrup, Innovator and Founder, Set Mall India. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for the Grand Jury. The arterial pulse analyzer is just the first step in our mission in making this country a more healthier and smarter place to live in. Power is of two kinds: one is obtained by fear of punishment, and the other is obtained by acts of love. And power based on love. is 1000 times more effective and permanent than the one based on punishment to the five finalists let's have the first one the first innovation tonight is the arterial pulse analyzer it's a portable and affordable cardiovascular screening device developed by sushant pujari and pradeep gatkin here's their av welcome to the heart disease capital of the world 60% of all heart disease patients live in India. If you look at the rural context or for that matter even the urban context, people actually don't go down to hospitals to get themselves checked for cardiovascular diseases. Uh, they actually uh, only end up coming to the hospital once they've got their first heart attack. Severe lack of access, awareness and affordability have pushed the morbidity numbers of heart disease to a shocking 20%. 
but an unconventional free diagnostic tool has the potential to turn these numbers around. Arterial pulse analyzer built by Sushant Pujari and Pradeep Gutkin is a low-cost cardiovascular diagnostic device which claims to spot a grave heart condition months in advance. The device actually is a strap-based device which uh, has a sensor on it which collects the data and uh, pushes it uh, to a tablet or a mobile phone through Bluetooth. And uh, the tablet has an algorithm which analyzes the data uh, which is uh, collected from the sensor and uh, can actually give out parameters to a clinician based on which he can do his diagnosis. Arterial pulse analyzer is even challenging the very existence of the gold standard in heart disease diagnosis, the ECG. If you look at the current devices that are available like an ECG, it can help you understand whether the person is suffering from a cardiovascular disease or not. It can act actually not help you understand whether there is a possibility of the person suffering from the disease in the near future. As the number one killer in India, cardiovascular diseases are an immense burden on our productive society. With arterial pulse analyzer, we may be one step closer to eradicating them. Please welcome on stage the co-developer of the arterial pulse analyzer, Sushant Pujari from IIT Bombay. Thanks to my mom and Sri Satya Sai Seva organization, I had the opportunity of attending a lot of medical camps when I was a kid. And because of that, I got a lot of perspective of how bad the healthcare situation is in India. This is one incident I remember where we were organizing a heart camp uh, and uh, we had actually organized an ECG operator to come down and help us out in diagnosing patients. And the ECG operator didn't turn up. Because of that, we actually end up missing out on diagnosing a lot of patients. Now, this situation actually creates a lot of questions, you know. What if there was a device which an NGO can afford? What if there was a device which can be used by any normal clinician and give diagnosis of whether the person is suffering from a cardiovascular disease or not? It's these kind of questions which me and Pradeep have been pondering on and that's how we actually been focusing and we've actually come up with the arterial pulse analyzer. If you look at the current facilities that we provide, we've tried to keep the cost really low. We've tried to keep the device as easy as possible. And with minimal training, any clinician would be able to diagnose whether the person is suffering from cardiovascular disease or not. The most important thing is we give pre-diagnosis. That's something that can help a patient decrease the burden of suffering, going through multiple tests, which can uh, be very expensive. A daily wage worker cannot actually afford to go down to a district level hospital. What if we can get the hospital right to him? I believe that preventive healthcare needs to be incorporated into the Indian healthcare system, which can help to a great extent in decreasing the burden on the system. As for the future of the device, we are actually exploring the option of wearables where we can make it a personalized device, manage, a disease management tool, which can help patients already suffering from cardiovascular diseases to look at health trends and actually uh, you know, give them some sort of uh, you know, alert if in case their health is going bad. We're also looking at an option of integrating it into telemedicine systems as well. I believe that mobility and connectivity are going to change the way healthcare is delivered in this country. The arterial pulse analyzer is just the first step in our mission in making this country a more healthier and smarter place to live in. Thank you. Does it tell you the degree of blockage in the, in the veins or yes, in the sir. arteries? Yes, sir. So uh, there's, there's some specific parameter called arterial stiffness that uh, we use and based on which uh, the patient can, uh, the clinician will actually get a sense of how bad the situation is and how bad the blockage is. And uh, because of that, I believe that uh, it, it can get a, give the patient a sense that it needs, he needs to actually take preventive action and do something about it. For 10 people, if the EEG or the ECG could predict 
in 10 cases that something was going on, right. how many cases would your uh, device catch? Uh, we actually look at look ourselves as an equivalent device. So maybe 10 out of 10, I, that's what I would say. And what is looking like the cost or bill of material of this device? Uh, so we are looking at keeping it cheaper than a mobile phone. So that would be like, you know, uh, 10 times cheaper than the current device that is available. I'm talking about your cost. Uh, the cost would be around 10 to 20,000. Thank you. Thank you, Sushant Pujari. And uh, our next innovation is called the Wi-Fi trash can. It's a social garbage bin with the promise of free Wi-Fi access developed by Raj Desai and Pratik Agrawal. Here's their AV. Eat, drink, litter. Not the ideal way of realizing the dream of a Swachh Bharat. I know it's bad, but uh, sometimes I'm lazy enough and I throw the trash anywhere on the road, I feel like. It's the municipality's job to do that. It's not my job. So yeah, I'll throw the trash wherever I want. We can't afford waste. Filthy excuses will not do anymore. Something needs to be done. With this resolve, two innovators from Mumbai came up with Wi-Fi trash bin. Take out your trash and get rewarded with free internet. We really wanted to incentivize people to use Wi-Fi and sort of get them, get a positive approach to the entire thing. So we thought of uh, coming up with the idea of, you know, giving people Wi-Fi for cleaning the area around them. Wi-Fi trash bin is a high-tech dustbin which flushes a Wi-Fi code every time the garbage is disposed into it. The user can use the code to get access to free Wi-Fi throughout the day. We were sitting and wondering, apart from vanilla Wi-Fi, what all we can do with Wi-Fi and networks as a technology to get people more socially aware, to make people use uh, the technology more and get people to interact with each other by making a difference around them. At the much hyped NH7 Weekender Music Festival last year, every time the users logged in using a Wi-Fi code, an automated tweet went out to their social connections, letting others know about the Wi-Fi bin. If you look at it, even in India, even today, even in cities like Bombay and Delhi and Bangalore, a lot of people, I would say at least more than 50% of the people in these cities don't have access to internet. And the way to give access to internet is very simple to just set up a hotspot where for something as simple as just trashing something, you get Wi-Fi. So I think that is what we want to build and that is the end game of the entire thing. Please welcome on stage the co-developers of the Wi-Fi trash bin, Raj Desai and Pratik Agarwal of Think Screen Infomedia Private Limited. Good evening all, uh, we're Pratik and Raj from Think Scheme here to tell you all about the Wi-Fi dustbin. Uh, tonight basically we're going to touch upon three things, design, behavior and positive reinforcement leading to our innovation. So a few years back, uh, like many of us, our first exposure to foreign land was Southeast Asia when we visited Singapore. One distinct uh, uh, difference that we saw was the uh, attitude of people and the way systems and processes were built over there. And what we realized, what countries were now concentrating more upon design. And as we can see on the slides, uh, countries were also now developing uh, a department of design within their government ministries. This wasn't just visual design, it was how systems and processes worked. For behavior, we frankly don't need to look much uh, further beyond our country. In a very recent example, we can have a look at Ahmedabad where uh, there was a rise in uh, people using public toilets. The reason, they were offered one rupee to do so. And to think about, think about it, it is still cheaper than cleaning them. So this is something that we observed and we sort of correlated and we said, you know, why don't we give people something that they really want in the form of Wi-Fi for something that they would really like to have, which is a Swachh Bharat. And that is basically the point of inception for the Wi-Fi dustbin. I think for us, it was an extremely elegant solution to an extremely not so elegant problem. So 
I think a couple of years back when we implemented this at the weekender, for the first time in my life, I saw people queuing up to use a bin. So that is the kind of impact that we are talking about. And this is actually the power of incentivizing, you know. The eventual aim for us is to set up a network of these bins across India and sort of incentivize people across India and gamify the process in a way. So the idea is that if I set up these bins in, let's say, Bombay and Delhi, and if I suddenly tell you that Delhi has collected 100 kgs of garbage, I think Bombay is suddenly going to say that, okay, why am I not collecting that much? So the idea behind all of this is to have design thinking integrated into everything. And I think uh, the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi, has summed it up very beautifully. And he said, power is of two kinds. One is obtained by fear of punishment and the other is obtained by acts of love. And power based on love is thousand times more effective and permanent than the one based on punishment. So I think we need to get more effective with our power. We need to start innovating. We need to start disrupting. And we need to start designing a better future for all of us. Thank you. Thank you. It's very interesting how you get people to collect the garbage. I don't know. Uh, how you would make the collection of those trash cans and then removal of them also equally effective. You might end up with overflowing garbage cans so, with this popularity. Yeah, I, I, we thought about that. In fact, you know, so getting people to trash into the can is the first step, right? So you have incentivized people by saying that, okay, I'm going to give you free Wi-Fi. Why don't you trash it into the can? Now the next step is I need to get the dumper to collect the uh, trash from the can. And then I need the dumper to go and dump it at the right place. So the idea is you need to start incentivizing every part of this process. So you know, instead of me paying 10 people equal amounts of money for collecting unequal amounts of garbage, what I do is I'll tell you, okay, I'll give you a fixed fee. But for every kilo, I'll pay you an incentive. So the idea is to incentivize people because the dumper or the contractor who's doing the dumping has no incentive to take 1,000 kilos of garbage instead of 600. How much does a bin cost and what's the typical life of this bin? The one you saw in the video, that was created for one event to create, attract a lot of attention. It was a, the bin's height was four feet in, uh, four feet tall and the complete structure 12 feet. Uh, we have other designs which are much more portable, which will be costing something between, uh, depending on the number, something between five to uh, 15,000 as well. It need not be, you know, like a swanky looking bin. It could be like a normal dustbin, I can just plug it in. In which case, I'll only be incurring the technology cost and obviously the logic and the software cost, which gets split over the number of bins that you're deploying it for. Think about 5,000 volunteers looking out for this child. So amassing help becomes really, really easy with this sort of technology. My dear friends, we are looking here at vaccinating children, preventing disease, preventing suffering, avoiding deaths and building strong children and a healthy India. Right, ladies and gentlemen, our next innovation is Helping Faceless. It uses face recognition to combat child trafficking. It has been developed by Sai Meera and Shashank Singh. Here's the AV. When I was six years old, uh, my dad got transferred to Lucknow. And that particular day, we were going to Hazard Ranch to meet his lawyer. And, uh, I was standing out and this man came along. He said that my dad has met with an accident. I went along with him. When my dad came out, he could not find me. He's panicked. He started talking to a lot of people to see where I was. Uh, that particular day, I was missing for 12 to 14 hours. 15 children go missing in India every hour. Unlike Shashank Singh, 40% of them are never found often forced into the murky world of child trafficking. I was saved by this uh, stranger I don't know much about. So I wanted to expand this, this, uh, this in innate ability of human beings to help each other to a scale where millions are helping out each other.
driven by the mission to combat child trafficking, Shashank and his partner Meera came up with Helping Faceless, a mobile app that uses face recognition to unite missing children with their parents. The app lets you, the user, help in matching photos of lost kids and contribute to the mission. You upload a photograph of a vulnerable child, we match it, then come up with a similarity index. We help the child to go back to the family, which is a big thing. With an estimated 1,35,000 children believed to be trafficked in India every year, Helping Faceless is not just bringing us together for a cause, it's also demonstrating how technology can enable us to fight back. And we're welcoming on stage the co-developers of Helping Faceless, Shashank Singh and Sai Meera. Hey guys, as you just saw, I was missing for 12 to 14 hours, yet I was lucky to be reunited with my family. Not every child is lucky enough to go back home, and that subconsciously has been our thought behind this innovation. We have tied up with this uh, leading face recognition technology provider, Kairos, and that's why we say we have 96% accuracy in matching the photographs. We have been able to help three children and uh, in a span of one year. So, If you have ever tried helping a child on street, you would know how many legal hoops you have to jump before any ac anything actionable happens. We consider this pain point and condense, condense this process so that uh, it takes few seconds to deliver help to a child rather than existing system which takes up to 72 hours or even more. Organizations working in child welfare face similar problems, which increases, increases their operational cost. With helping faceless, we can reduce that cost by several orders of magnitude and this factor provides us that scalability and commercial viability. There are few other verticals that we are exploring. Disaster management, where we can use the same technology platform to identify survivors and victims. History sheets of criminals can be accessed by police on their smartphones. And with a little tweaking of algorithms, we can even, even combat human trafficking. Yes, can you talk a little bit about the coordination with the local facilities or local authorities? How do you plan to scale that across different geographies? Right. So, uh, especially uh, in Maharashtra, they have a special cell uh, where they help uh, for child welfare and especially for missing children and women. So, uh, things are a little much, much easier in Maharashtra. Even in, on international borders, uh, South, uh, we have a South American partners who, and we are running a phase three pilot with them. If, so the idea is that if that pilot works out, we will take it to other governments like Paraguay, Ecuador, and Mojico. As I said, this is a long-term plan, 10-year plan, or rather even longer, where we want to become an international organization which can help children across the borders and across continents. I thought the more difficult and in many ways the more interesting part is somebody of a child who's gone missing. Mm -hmm. Does your app do that? Because that's, you know, this is fine. Right, but somebody right, and, right. You know, you're sending you the police, which is very good, yeah. but I could get a social worker and help right, the child right. maybe. But if somebody's gone missing, mm -hmm. what do you do? Do you just send that to police around the country? Does your app ac provide access to them? Because the child could be anywhere in the country. What, right. what do you do in such a case? Do you have something on that? We had this case in last January, uh, a child, a uh, uh, child, challenged child sort of stepped out of his house and then went missing in minutes and his mother couldn't find him. So his psychologist called us and said that this child has gone missing and this was within one hour. Uh, we pushed a notification to all the users in Wadala and King Circle region, or rather South Bombay after that, that this child has gone missing. This is the photograph, no other information than this. Please be on a lookout for this child. He really needs help. So we really saw good traction there. We really saw people, uh, we have around 5,000 plus volunteers. So think about 5,000 volunteers looking out for this child. So amassing help becomes really, really easy with this sort of technology. 
Shashank Singh, Sai Meera, thank you very much. And uh, our next innovation is called Immunize India. It's the world's largest vaccination reminder service developed by Dr. Ranjan Pejavar and Gopal Krishna. Here's their AB. India has an annual birth rate of 27 million. We lose 1.5 million children under the age of 5 years every year. And 1 billion of them are due to diseases which could have been prevented by immunization. Only 65% of the babies have received all the immunizations. Imagine if we have a vaccination coverage of 90% or more, what would be the, the, the benefit to the children of India? I want you to just take a minute and imagine this. When distressed mothers approach Dr. Ranjan Pejavar, feeling guilty for having missed their child's vaccination, an idea struck him. Together with his team, he developed Immunize India, a nationwide personalized SMS alert system to remind parents to vaccinate their children at the right time. You can put a common notice in the TV or paper, but it's not tailor-made to your child's date of immunization. So to have an individualized, tailor-made program which can reach the masses because of the mobile revolution which has happened in India, we thought SMS would be the right way. We have nearly 700,000 registration, I am very proud to say, and probably this is the largest vaccination alert program in the world. Parents can register for this free service by simply sending an SMS with their baby's name and date of birth to 566778. Thereafter, three reminders are sent at two days intervals for each vaccination that is due. If the vaccination coverage increases, the vaccine preventable diseases are prevented. If the diseases are prevented, the babies don't suffer, the children don't suffer, children don't die. Please welcome on stage the developer of Immunize India, Dr. Ranjan Pejavar of the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. Respected members of the jury, ladies and gentlemen, in my 33 years of pediatric practice, I have seen countless parents coming with dejection, disappointment, guilt, shame and anger that they have delayed or missed vaccination. A delayed vaccination is like denied vaccination. That is why we innovated this program called Immunize India. India has nearly a billion mobile users and we thought a SMS based vaccination alert program should work well. In India, our program is adopted, endorsed, and promoted by Indian Academy of Pediatrics, which has 25,000 members. The government officials have taken part in the launching of this uh, service, so they are quite happy with this, and the talks are on for this to be included in the government mother and baby tracking system. We have already received inquiries from PAHO, the Pan-American Health Organization, who want to duplicate this. We have had Kentucky University doing this program, validating it, and now they have expanded it to the whole county of Kentucky. But our challenge is increasing the awareness. And the next challenge is doing it in multiple languages. Future lies in increasing the vaccine coverage in India in the first instant to 80%. My dear friends, we are looking here at vaccinating children, preventing disease, preventing suffering, avoiding deaths, and building strong children and a healthy India. Thank you. So first of all, the 700,000 number of uh, users adopting the service is phenomenal. So do you have any insights on how the word is spreading? How are people getting to know about the service and registering? Now, the main thrust comes from the pediatricians. 
we started with the pediatricians because we felt that if it comes from a trusted source, they are doctors or they are child specialists, the parents will catch on. As I said, in the coming year, we want to involve more and more people, social organizations, other professional organizations, Indian Medical Association, obstetricians. We want to involve churches, the all people who have influence on the mother and child. Isn't there a possibility, since you're working with the you know, Association of Pediatricians and the Indian Medical Association, to at birth itself get this data and capture that data uh, in some way, since you're working with the government also, I'm sure this may be something they'll be beginning to do. Have you looked at this possibility so that when a child is born, it's automatically registered? When we partner with the government, all the maternity centers and the primary health centers where the delivery happens, it will be automatically included. And by word of mouth, the, the women's organizations, the schools, the religious organizations, I, I feel it's going to have a cascading effect. If supposing the vaccination has happened, can I click yes, vaccination done, and then it goes through your record? No. Currently, no. But we, because it's a very difficult, uh, you know, modality to run both. And as I said, what we thought was we'll do this alert system first. That will increase hopefully by 10 to 15 percent, and then we will do the supervisory, or you know, the follow-up. It's going to be very, very difficult. And now it is in English, but very soon we are launching the Hindi version. It's very easy. Whatever language the registration happens, same language, the alert will go to the same phone for 12 years. Not one or two, 12 years. Thank you. The whole idea of smart cities as emerging, then smart parking solutions are very much needed. And that's what we are here to create, to better manage cities. The subject is so interesting and, uh, you know, it's uh, so energetic to think that we can really make this world so well connected. Our final, final innovation for the evening is called Consta Park. It's an app-based on-demand valet parking service. It has been developed by Chetan Chauhan and Mehul Pangte. This is what it's about. Congested roads, choked streets, clogged by lanes. Parking is far from being a walk in the park in Bangalore. Sometimes I get hassled looking out for parking. I think I waste a lot of time searching for parking. I prefer taking a cab or an auto rickshaw whenever I go out, especially on the weekends. Sometimes usually I have to park outside in a public place, say, on roadside or traffic side, which is not at all safe. With millions of vehicles being added to India's biggest cities, average time to find parking space is increasing, resulting in traffic coming to a crawl. This everyday problem of city parking is the driving force behind Consta Park, an app-based on-demand valet parking service that aims to optimize the process of parking cars. Parking is a major challenge across cities and it affects the quality of life across the city. It uh, creates a lot of traffic jam and haphazardness across the city. The stress on roads for the availability of parking is very, very high. With Consta Park, uh, we intend to achieve better managed cities, better parking facilities and secure parking facilities. Just download the Consta Park app and select where you are heading. Once you reach your destination, confirm your booking code, match the valet driver's name and photo on your app screen and hand over the car. Once you hand over the keys to our valets, they take it directly to a secure parking. And once you, you can also tell them to wash the car, uh, refuel the car. And uh, once you need it back, you just need to press a button on the app, car comes back to you. 
Constapark also provides their Valley Solution services to restaurants and malls, making weekends a comfortable and profitable experience for all. And now we're welcoming on stage uh, the co-developer of Consta Park, Chetan Chauhan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, this is the see, uh, scene we all face every day. This is all of us cribbing in our cars every day and passing by the traffic lights. Interestingly, this traffic has uh, snarls which we see are a result of a lot of cars haphazardly parked, which creates a bottleneck, and also the people who are looking for parking. This instigated us to work on the whole app Consta Park. Consta Park intend to make cities much more accessible. The whole idea is to organize and optimize parking, which is not happening at this point of time. What we do is we look at integrated spaces across. We look at churches, other places which provides uh, spaces around. We uh, network them in uh, our system and utilize them. With this, Consta well-managed parking lots, we create a better mobility across vehicles. Vehicles get parked quickly and they do not stay there waiting for parking. And apart from this, um, better managed parking directly saves a lot of fuel. There are two aspects of Consta Park. One is value on demand, which we have spoken about, and we are piloting another service is overnight parking, which is seeing quite a traction right now because a lot of people have cars, but they do not have parking. And in both of these models, idea of safety is embedded every time you use, uh, we have an insurance cover which covers and gives protection to the user of vehicle. And where are we headed to? What we look at the future of this innovation? We look at an integrated ecosystem of services, car servicing and uh, parking, uh, accessories of the cars, which we look at a marketplace model to integrate here. But the core and crux of our innovation remains parking and the management. To, uh, because the whole idea of smart cities are emerging, then smart parking solutions are very much needed. And that's what we are here to create, a better managed cities. Thank you. If I understand this correctly, the cars are parked in your parking facility or yes. some tie-ups that you have. Yes, we have networked around. We do the revenue share with the parking lots across the location. So what percentage of, your, of, park, of Bangalore's parking capacity do you have on your app right now? See, uh, right now, we are working in locations like Koramangla, Indranagar, MG Road and Commercial Street. So we are tied up with networks here. People who manage parking lots, there are private parking lots and there are MLCPs around. So we utilize both of these places right now. So what percentage would that be of cars? Uh, would be somewhere around 20% 20 20 to 30% right now. Since you've been doing this for a while now, how far have you got? Have you, what's the sort of scale you are at now? I uh, think yeah, yeah, you know, so Nisha, ask the question a different way, but just where are you? I mean, how many cars? So give us some index of where you are. We are dealing with 300 customers because uh, at this point of time, we want to create a better customer experience and don't want to go beyond our bandwidth. And in overnight parking, we are piloting right now. And pilot is, I mean, we thought we can manage with two people or three people, but it's just going beyond because requests are coming in because demand for overnight parking is tremendous. Thank you, Thank you so much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so these were our final five innovations. A big round of applause for the innovators. May I also now introduce our chief guest for the evening, Minister of State for Home Affairs, Mr. Kiran Rijiju. It's wonderful to, to be part of this a great effort being, uh, you know, propounded by the groups, and I'm happy to be invited here. The subject is so interesting, and uh, you know, it's uh, so energetic to think that we can really make this world so well connected. Uh, you know, the digital India, which the government is you know, really giving so much of time, and it has been launched recently. And the, uh, this networked India, which you have launched here, this has really uh, made a situation where we can gel each other very well. It's very complementary to each other. And that is how government, 
you know, private uh, you know, entities, the young brands. We really have to work together. Thank you so much. It is a very difficult choice. All five great ideas, all with great promise, all with things that can really create a big impact. talk about the winners now and for this may I invite the grand jury members on stage also our chief guest for the evening Mr. Kiran Rijiju and uh, Mr. Doris Thien. please come on stage Let me, uh, before, we, before we announce the winners, which everyone is waiting for, uh, let me ask the jury what they thought about the innovations and what was presented this evening. I think I speak on behalf of my fellow members of the jury. It was an extremely difficult task. I had a look at the 35 and they were all very good. And then when I saw the last five, it seemed, my God, how are we going to choose? The presentations were excellent. They all kept their time. Uh, we questioned them and picked up some more insights. And uh, we had a very fixed time to debate, but I can only tell you it was a very difficult choice. All five great ideas, all with great promise, all with things that can really create a big impact, which is one of the important things we looked at. So very excited about what's been done, and congratulations to Network 18 and Ericsson in putting this together to tap into the innovative stream among Indians and to see how we can use that to go further and do better things in the country. I think most of us uh, agreed on rating the innovations, but I want to say that my votes go for CNN, IBN, and Ericsson for putting this uh, interesting show together and for inviting this person from India's most disconnected and unnetworked place, Ladakh. I want to say a little bit, you know. Ladakh is a region that, is, that remains six months cut off, no roads, and no internet connectivity. For the last two weeks, there has been no connectivity. It was very difficult to connect to them. And this morning when I arrived, I was digitally starved. <laughs> Emails, social media, and the issue is that despite such problems like disconnectivity, uh, digital and physical, we are connected only by air, and the airlines, unfortunately, I want to use this forum for a vested interest of Ladakh. The airlines conspire to charge Ladakhi people for a one hour flight, 25,000 rupees. You know, that's what they paid to bring me here. <laughs> and they could have easily brought somebody from Paris or London rather than me from one hour away. So <laughs> the least. <laughs> <laughs> the least the nation can do for a place that is cut off for six months, although we are just across Tibet, which has high-speed trains, is to make flights at least normal. Bombay costs them 3,000 rupees. A Ladakhi student or a patient has to cough out 25 to 30,000 rupees. So I would like to request all of you to start a campaign on social media, write to the Prime Minister to connect Ladakh in every way. Thank you very much. A great moment for me to announce the winner, Arterial Pulse Analyzer. And the next winner is Immunize India.
applause, ladies and gentlemen, for the winners, and maybe also have the other innovators on stage.